Why is it that we can scroll for hours on social media, play video games without even trying, but struggle to focus even for a few minutes when studying? Science shows us that there is an easy way to solve this. So you can easily allocate your time to what you know is important. And also make studying hard feel like scrolling TikTok. If you're new here, my name is Malki Assad. I'm a plastic surgery resident in the US and the founder of TheMatchGuy.com, a company that helped thousands of medical graduates match into their dream residency in the United States. And it's not an accident that I consistently ranked first in my medical school years and scored over 99th percentile on the USMLE exams. And also all our tutors and many of the students we tutored scored 250 plus 260 plus on their exams. It's because we know how to do it. So if you're one of those people who are interested in one-on-one -on -one help and have the dedication to work toward that goal, then we can make sure that your dream can happen in the shortest time possible, while help you avoid mistakes that we and other aspirants have made along the journey. So if you're that person, go ahead and click on the link in the description below and let's chat to see if we can help you achieve your dream score and your dream residency spot. So how was I able to do it? Well, I've always had this ability to access the state of hyper-focus at will, and this is not like a magical power I have over other people. Anyone can do it. Stick around until the end of this video and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And I'll also share with you a checklist that you can use to access the state of hyper focus at will. So why is it that gamers stay for hours, sometimes 16 hours playing video games, solving extremely complex problems, or athletes or music players practicing for hours every single day? It's easy to assume that they're just having fun. But what's really happening here is a phenomena called effortless exertion. And the word kind of explains itself. You exert yourself without necessarily feeling you're spending much effort. And effortless exertion is a core characteristics of a phenomena called the flow. And this concept was introduced by psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, which describes a state of complete focus and immersion in activity. When in flow, individuals experience a sense of fluidity between their body and their minds, often leading to high levels of productivity and creativity. And people have hypothesized that effortless exertion happens when you're fully focused. And the prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain that gives you that sense of self and helps you track time. And with the prefrontal cortex slightly less active, you lose track of time, you lose track of self, which affects your perception of time and making you feel hours pass as minutes. It makes challenging tasks easier and more enjoyable. And that's how athletes, writers, programmers spend hours and hours doing extremely high complex work without feeling much exertion. But here is the thing, effortless exertion can also happen with destructive activities like spending hours and hours scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, playing video games, or binging a whole series on Netflix. And one thing to keep in mind about effortless exertion is it actually makes you fatigued without you feeling it. So there is also a risky side of it if not used correctly. Because if these social media platforms force you to use effortless exertion while you're scrolling, it sucks almost all your energy and you're left with nothing to achieve your goals and your dreams. And that's why one of the main reasons for not getting into that flow state is time slippage. Time just flows around from our hands. And at the end of the day, we ask ourselves, what have we done today? So one of the main ways to counteract that, to fight that, is to keep track of your time. Keep track of every single hour of your day. Make a detailed study or work schedule, study plan. Start with the big goals. What are you trying to achieve today? How many pages of a book you wanna study? How many projects you wanna work on? Then look at how much time each project takes, how, mu how much time do you need to study a certain number of pages and allocate certain number of accomplishment or goal to achieve for even every hour of your day. And don't just assume that you will do things on time because our assumptions are usually massively incorrect. Even your breaks have to be on that schedule. For example, if you have five minutes, an hour of break, you know that you will not be spending hours of your day on Instagram because you only have five minutes, an hour. And if you're a dedicated person, you're gonna struggle in the beginning, but you're gonna make it happen. And remember at the beginning 
of each day, you will go into that struggle phase. The demon in you will question your study schedule, will make you ask yourself, do I really want to do this schedule? Do I really want to follow a detailed plan? Let me just play it by ear. And, and you have to answer that voice in you by saying no. I'm not going to let time passes by. I'm going to follow this plan because you know that this plan will take you where you want to go. And in behavioral psychology, they call this momentum, which is the increased likelihood of continuing a behavior once it's initiated. So yes, it might be rough at the beginning of the day. It might be rough the first few days that you do this, the first few weeks. But once you get in that habit, that flow, things will be effortless. And we developed a simple time tracking template that you can use for planning your study schedule, your work schedule, and you can get this fully for free by clicking on the link in the description below. So make sure to make that investment in your future to spend 10 to 15 minutes a day planning the day ahead, the week ahead, because that will put you on track to achieve your goal. You have to develop that sense of urgency for time. Imagine somebody tells you you're gonna die tomorrow. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? I would assume how would you spend the last day of your life? You'll probably become very conscious of every minute of that last day. Of course you won't die tomorrow. I hope not. But the reality is you will die one day and all the time from now until that moment is extremely valuable. Every day that passes is gone forever. It's never coming back. Time is not renewable. So you better pay attention to this limited resource and start planning your day to make the best advantage of your time. As I said at the beginning of this video, we've helped many applicants ace their exams, achieve their goal of matching to residency in the US. And if you're one of those people, go ahead and schedule a consultation with our customer support team to see how we can best help you. If you have any tips that I might have missed, I would love you to share them in the comments below and I wish you best luck on your exams. Peace.